In the seminary and theological studies, it was usual for us to have at least one year, if not several years, as students, as seminarians, to work in a parish. And so it was for me in my third year in the seminary. Two of my brothers and I worked in a parish, St. Matthew's in Baltimore, Maryland. And we had uh, the assist young assistant as our uh, priest supervisor. Father Bob was a wonderful supervisor. He met with us every single week and we reflected on various uh, things that we had done, the little bit of prayer, participation in the life of the parish. But you know, in the, when you do those kind of meetings, you also learn about the supervisor. Father Bob had a theory and it kind of is a funny one that every priest only has one sermon in them one fundamental or basic idea and all their sermons despite the wealth of the gospels and the wealth of the teaching of the church really are only variations on a theme i knew that wasn't true in his preaching when we listened to him preach uh, and i've come to see that there's a certain truth to it uh, and it's a challenge for the gospel to open each of us up so that we can spread the news uh, in all the different ways, not just that one theme. If you had to ask me though what my theme was, I would immediately reply gratitude. Gratitude for my life, for faith, for my loving parents, uh, for my friends, uh, for my education, my ministry, my vocation. I could go on and on. Gratitude is very, very important to me and it always saddens me when I find people that are not grateful. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst we're moving almost into a year, certainly into our 10th month of being shut down, of a quarter of a million people in our own country and many, many more across the world who have died of this terrible disease. Um, it may be spitting in the wind, but I guess one of the feelings that I have is one of being grateful grateful for all that we do have, even though we may not have a lot. Some of you may have lost loved ones. Some of you may have been afflicted by the coronavirus and COVID-19, or maybe you've had to minister and help somebody who has been afflicted by that. And yet in the midst of that, there is so much to be grateful for, for our own life, for our health, for the wonderful and hard work of scientists and researchers, of our heroes in the hospitals and nursing homes who care for people. The possibility that a vaccine may soon be uh, produced and we hope safely distrib distributed, first of all, to those on the front lines of healthcare and to many, many others so that we can conquer this terrible disease and many, many other things as well. I ask you, maybe at the beginning of this season of Advent, um, to spend a few minutes in prayer, just giving thanks for the simple things that God has provided to you. Someone to love, someone to be loved by, the gift of having enough food for today and tomorrow, and to be spiritually nourished by the love of God in Jesus Christ. This coming week, we have two feasts of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, the feast on the 8th is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, in which she uh, who was ex uh, asked by God to be the mother of the Savior also conceived him without sin. Uh, a unique experience in human history and yet also a witness uh, to God's uh, love for her and how she was part of salvation. And on December 12th is the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, um, a special, I guess, devotion to myself. And one of the things that she said to Juan de Diego uh, way back in the uh, 1500s uh, outside of Mexico City was, am I not with you? Is the Lord not with you? Do you not wear the mantle of my love? In both of these feasts, the Immaculate Conception and the uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mary is a witness that God is always with us. Some may always wonder 
in the midst of such difficult times. Um, is God abandoning us? I never doubt that. And Mary is a witness to that very presence. May we um, give thanks to God for the gift of Mary's faithfulness as the mother of our Savior and in all the different titles that Mary witnesses uh, to the love of God through Christ given to us. May we be grateful in this season of pandemic. Yeah.
Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph the Worker Parish at Word of God Church. We welcome all visitors as we prepare to receive our Lord in word and sacrament, especially those who are joining us via live streaming on YouTube. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant is Father Moeller. We beg your indulgence, but there are multiple announcements this morning. We highly recommend that you take a bulletin with you today. The parish library and gift shop are open this morning until 1130. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania health regulations require that all persons coming into our churches or buildings wear masks and social distance. The Diocese of Pittsburgh guidelines during the coronavirus also require masks and social distancing. Please wear your mask into church during mass and as you leave. Those who have breathing problems and can't wear a mask must have a shield or other face covering. All clergy and liturgical ministers will wear their masks throughout the mass as well. We keep others safe and ourselves safe when we wear masks. The Christmas Giving Tree Project has been extended until next Sunday, December 13th. Please visit, visit the displays at the entrances of the church. There are free Advent devotional booklets in the literature racks and tables. The Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary a holy day of obligation, and the patronal feast day of the United States of America is this Tuesday, December 8th. Please refer to the Mass Intention Schedule on page 4 of the Bulletin for Mass locations and times. The Christmas Mass Schedule can be found on page 7 of the Bulletin. Please note that reservations are required to attend one of the masses. Please see the bulletin for instructions on how to register on the parish website or by calling the parish office if you do not have internet access. Please stand and join in singing on Jordan's Bank. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And uh, just a quick point of clarification. So we do celebrate the Immaculate Conception this week. Of course, the obligation has been lifted. There's no obligation to attend Mass uh, at this time. But we do thank the Lord that we are able to celebrate today the second Sunday of Advent. And so we prepare our hearts uh, for this great celebration. We first call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance into his company, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord not, does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to recompense. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and elements will be dissolved by fire. And the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I will ba I've baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're being taken out into the wilderness, out into the desert, along with St. John the Baptist. Now, we know that those experiences of desert and wilderness are an important part of the scriptures, the important part of salvation history, that they're places of testing by God. They're also places of rebellion of God's people. 
There are places where God's saving acts, though, also take place, and where he makes those sacred covenants with his people. And so the fact is there are times we do have to enter into these desert or wilderness experiences in our life, where other things are stripped away and where we are put right before God. And we must face the truth about ourselves by facing God and by taking away these other things that we might depend on or think that we needed. The fact is that we either choose to go into the desert willingly or we'll be forced into the desert in various ways. We can think of the story of the prodigal son. You know, the prodigal son got his inheritance from the father, was able to distract himself by using that money to live a, a wild life for a short period of time. But eventually the money ran out. He found himself in that pig pen. And so he found that desert experience, that wilderness where he then had to face up to what he had done, face up to his relationship with his father. And it's the same thing for us. While we might try and distract ourselves from those encounters with the Lord in the wilderness and the desert, eventually the time will come. And certainly we can all experience that at this time, those things being stripped away at time of testing, of preparation of God to see if we are prepared, preparing the way for the coming of God into our life. So St. John the Baptist is one who chose to follow the Lord, chose to go into the desert after being called by God to prepare the way of the Lord. And we too, like St. John the Baptist, are called to prepare the way of the Lord and the invitation and the coming of the Holy Spirit that Jesus will come to bring with him as well. As it says in Catechism 720, Finally, with John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit begins the restoration of man to the divine likeness, prefiguring that he, what would he, he would achieve with and in Christ. John's baptism was for repentance. Baptism in water and the Spirit will be a new birth. So another way of looking at this call to repentance that St. John the Baptist proclaims is also a call to authenticity, a call to integrity. It's a call to strip away all that's not of God. Father Delph, the, the priest I've been speaking about in terms of Advent this year, who faced off against the Nazis, was martyred by the Nazis back in 1945 for his opposition to them. He spoke about God during his Advent homilies as the absolute ultimate. The absolute ultimate. And he says when we face God as the absolute ultimate, there strips away so many different things. There's no more compromising, no more cheap negotiating with God, no more half-truths, no more living in double meanings, that all of our facades, all of our masks, if you will, are stripped away. So while we wear these physical masks, we're called to strip away those other metaphorical masks that we wear, those ways that we put on uh, other things in our life. I can remember, you know, just a simple example of this in my own life, when I started high school, I think I was in ninth grade uh, when I, this happened, but some guys were talking about, you know, how much they enjoyed riding dirt bikes and their experiences with dirt bikes. And I just remembered, you know, lying and saying that I rode dirt bikes all the time and enjoyed doing that, even though I'd never ridden a dirt bike, I don't think, in my entire life. And so we all see in our own lives those different ways we try and put on those, those different masks or those different ways we try and put ourselves above others or or make ourselves something different than what we are. But this Advent season is a time for us to strip all those false things away and to be honest and authentic before God and before one another. We hear that being proclaimed in our second reading today from St. Peter, where St. Peter tells us to conduct ourselves in holiness and devotion and to be eager to be found without spot or blemish for when Christ comes again. And so the good news is, again, we don't do this simply on our own efforts. So repentance is uh, something that we can offer to the Lord, but it's also the power of the Spirit that has to be there to make it happen and to transform us and to really move us forward to prepare the way of the Lord. And so this is something that, of course, begins with the gift of baptism and also confirmation, but also must be continued. That is something that happens not only once, but is a continual invitation. St. Bede says that now we are baptized by the Lord and the Holy Ghost 
not only on the day of our baptism, during where we're, we're washed in the font of life, the remission of our sins, but also daily by the grace of that same Spirit, by which we are inflamed to do things which please God. And so we must be inflamed by that Spirit to burn away all those things which aren't of God, to burn away, burn away all those false things which cause us to not prepare the way of the Lord, to have those, those barriers between us and God and His coming again. So we pray that the Lord may bring us to a greater sense of authenticity and integrity in our life during this Advent season, that like St. John the Baptist, we'll choose to go out into the desert, into the wilderness, to face ourselves in light of God, God who is the absolute ultimate, and so we can prepare our hearts for the coming uh, of the Lord again, to celebrate the great season of Christmas, but also to reflect on how we'll be prepared for Christ to come the second time. So let us prepare our hearts for this great reality, to recognize the God who wants to strip away all these things from our life, so that we can prepare to truly receive with joy the Savior who is coming. Now together let us pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, lifting up these prayers and intentions of our hearts, we offer them to our blessed Lord. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That holy church may reveal the glory of the Lord for all peoples to see. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christian leaders may work for justice and peace based on divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That others may see the patience of God in the way we treat them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ill and sick of our parish community, especially for those of our parish prayer chain, and the book of the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose deaths we recall may enjoy light, pardon, and peace, especially, especially Lillian Icoco, John Amorelli, Thomas Collegran, Robert Gokovich, Paul Calamari, and Anne Pavlin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for Grace Cherry and Stella and John King, for whom this Mass is intended. We ask that the Lord grant his love in a special way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today, of course, is also the feast day of St. Nicholas, so we'll lift up all these prayers to the intercession of St. Nicholas. We humbly implore your mercy, Lord. Protect us in all dangers, that through the prayers of the bishop, St. Nicholas, that the way of salvation may be opened before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with humble prayers and our, our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and offered for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, St. Nicholas, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present, the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there. I unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Mm-hmm. 